Yes, my fellow Jamaicans and my good listeners, just remember to share and subscribe. Yes, today is June 1st, 2021. Welcome to the Jamaican Young Police Channel. Where an experienced detective of the Jamaica Constabulary Force is about to educate the audience with facts and uh, propaganda for the government or the criminals elected or unelected. And a matter of the chief in police officers too. You know I don't like them. In Jamaica, we have two political parties, the JLP and the PMP. In the 1970s, one of the party leaders then, Prime Minister Michael Manley, wanted to go the communist route because he wanted to be a leader for life, like the late Fidel Castro. He had sent over a thousand young men to train in Cuba in the use of firearm, explosives, and military training. On their return to Jamaica, they were known as brigadistas. Um, some of these brigadistas end up in the police force. I don't know if they end up in the military. I work with, I work with a few of them as police officers, as detectives, know them, and they were members of the government still. They represented the government of Jamaica at the time when Michael Manley was Prime Minister. Some of them were called home guards. And to contribute a little more to that, to let you see that the country where it was going, there's a, a black man, a JLP man named Pernell Charles. He was in no man's land G, um, camp. It was a fortified base where they had political prisoners, and Pernell Charles was one of them. He was here, and he was never arrested and charged for anything. Uh, most Jamaican people, I know you don't like to read, but if you look and look at D.K. Duncan, the late D.K. Duncan, the man who was, and, uh, who was sleeping with Michael Manley's wife, Beverly Manley, and eventually married to her after Michael Manley died, what he had said about when Michael Manley arrested Colonel Charles. Yeah, I know a lot of my, um, you know, PMP friend. Oh, yeah, labor right and, you know, and the labor them is going to happen. Anyway, I'm not doing anything to make anybody happy. I'm just telling the truth. I know that Jamaicans, we are people who do not like to hear the truth. You understand? But you won't hear this from the Jamaican media because they are lazy and complicit with the country wanting to join Russia and Cuba. Yet, not one of these people who are following the Cuba's agenda live in Cuba. Only those who wanted by the Jamaican law enforcement agency, like prominent law antenna. Uh, so she lives in Cuba now. So Cuba was a place where people were wanted from in the 70s. Even police helped them in the light. Jazz Rush and Anthony Brown to go to Cuba. Cuba was a, a refugee camp for PMP dissidents where they kill police or anybody they can run here. Anyway, so I want you to watch this video. Uh, you I'm going to 
Tivoli Gardens and Matches Lane, there, there. You see the police officers, all of those police officers right now. Guess what those police officers are doing now? They have to be demonstrating for their pension. Yes. After the, all those years, you know, 1980, you see the situation, that the condition that the police officers have to be working in. Remember, I know we have over a thousand young men in Jamaica trained in the use of firearm and explosive. They were known as brigadistas. They were trained by one side. Leader. They went to Cuba. The only party in Jamaica of any affiliation with Cuba was the PMP, Michael Manley. And so the police force from then until Bruce Wallen one, what they're saying it was the police force was a PMP police force riddled with all kind of people of questionable characters, brigadistas and all those people, people who weren't supposed to be in law enforcement, but they were able to infiltrate the police force because it was their party that was in government. So I wanted to watch Watch what is happening to these police officers who have served the country with honor, courage, and commitment, and they receive nothing. But the reason I'm not getting down to the nitty gritty of it yet, you know, I just wanted to watch what is happening now in 2021. You understand? Some of these photographs you're going to see of some police officers, you know, some of them, you know, they help man like Anthony Brown and Jar Flash, those men were notorious gunmen, murderers, to escape to go to Cuba. Police officer did it in Jamaica, you know. You understand? So, watch. Now, these police officers who have paid the price of protecting the Jamaican people, and this is what happened to them. But before I go any further, I want you to know that there's two communities in Jamaica that have killed over 37 police officers since independence and both communities receive over three billion dollars in compensation from the jamaican government let me repeat it these community tivoli gardens and coral gardens receive over three billion dollars in reparation the coral gardens is the one that the rasta talk about bad friday lies 
there's no bad Friday, nothing. They're the one that kills two police officers. But I'll do, that video is for another time. I'm just talking about what these police officers are going through today's day. What the government is waiting on for them to do is to die dead so that they don't have to pay them. But yet, so they pay reparation to the people who have killed their colleagues. And if you notice, even in the inquiry, they don't mention anything about any of these police officers who were killed. So watch this video. You see the police officers demonstrating for their benefits. But yet, so you know, the people in Tivoli Gardens didn't have to demonstrate our coral gardens to get over $3 billion from the government for killing over 37 police officers. So watch. You see, these men, they were a part of the brigadistas, those four men that they saw there. Demonstration regarding their pension benefits. Um, they have been asking for service pay to be included in their pension um, benefits calculation. Sure that I'm safe. Thank you. Right. Um, and that you have support from the police officer. Right. 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 Well, we're just having a peaceful demonstration to remind the Minister of Finance that our service pay needs to be calculated our pension, like yesterday. We are here to see how we can get the powers that be to honor this solemn obligation to members of the Jamaica Council of Force, ISF and District Council who are served and is in pay of service pay. So our service pay needs to be calculated in our pension. Now, in January 20, January 26, 2007, based on a 2006 agreement that service pay would be calculated in our pension based on amendment to the Pensions Act. So any home, let me wish you well and hope for that period really someday. I mean not too distant speaker, I'm aware of those one. Thank you, Superintendent, Mr. Special Area Team. Giving you a breakdown of what the police officers are demonstrating about, demonstrating for their pension. But you won't see this on the media in Jamaica, you, know? you understand? And if you look at the um, these photos of wanted men back in the 1980s, it is, these were men who were trained in Cuba by the Cuban government, Fidel Castro, you understand? They were called brigadistas. And these are the police officers now who were supposed to be getting their pension from why Jamaica become a habitable place, a place that we could live freely and one man, one vote. Then we didn't have any president, no prime minister, or no guy for life. And now these police officers, they have paid with their lives. Some of them, they are dead and gone. And it's now 15 years. This man that you're looking right here, equity, that's the man who trained me. and. A lot of police officers, but yet still he died and he did not get what was due to him. And all these people have been asking for is just their benefits. But guess what? The two communities who have killed 37 police officers, Coral Gardens and Tivoli Gardens, they have received over $3 billion. You won't hear that. That's a casket of one of the police officers who were killed during the incursion of Tivoli Garden when they were trying to arrest the drug kingpin, the big man, the, the most powerful man that ever walked in Jamaica that could lock down the country, Christopher Dodo Squawk. And these police officers are still suffering. So I want you to listen you know, to what happened after the police, when the police went there to arrest this man. Just watch. Okay, when they to arrest Christopher Dudusko. And these are the same police officers now, you know, who are begging for their pension. They have lost colleagues in the fight to be from to one of Kingston's service. poorest neighborhoods, Tivoli Gardens. On the third day of clashes with armed supporters of Christopher Dudas Coke, government forces broke through street barricades. 
Local media said the soldiers and police were going from house to house in search of coke, confiscating mobile phones as they went. A number of weapons have been found by my latest report. Um, a number of paraphernalia, um, including army but fatigues, ballistic vests and binoculars. Prime Minister Bruce Golding has vowed to arrest Coke, wanted in the US on drug and arms trafficking charges. Golding had been under increasing pressure to execute an extradition warrant for Coke, whose organization, based in the capital slums, is a strong backer of Golding's governing Labour Party. The clashes have forced most businesses in the capital centre and all the city's schools to shut down, and news of the declared state of emergency has triggered cancellations by tourists a mainstay of the island's economy. The government has not said how many of the reported civilian fatalities were Coke's gunmen or innocent bystanders. What I can assure you is that we have used no more force than is necessary to preserve lives, whether of our troops or of uh, the civilians that we are protecting. But the city's mayor said residents should report any cases of undue force. Situation where that the rights of innocent people are abused and trampled, and we're not, we're not prepared for that. According to unofficial reports, Coke's brother and right hand man was among those killed on Monday. But with gunfire still echoing out around the city as darkness falls after a third day of violence, with authorities giving no indication of how much longer their hunt for Coke will go on, residents of Jamaica's capital are bracing for more days of violence ahead. Sebastian Walker, Al Jazeera in Kingston, Jamaica. I want you to look at the photograph of this man. You know? That's one of the police officers that was killed during the incursion trying to capture Christopher Duduskwok. The same man that they call Prezi, President, Shartman, and he's the leader of the Shaw Posse. He's the most influential person ever to walk. Not even Bob Marley have that influence on him because I don't think Bob Marley could get so many people to come with arms to rise guns against the state of Jamaica and its people. But he's the one that people revere. So if you listen to the residents of Tivoli Gardens, what they are saying about Christopher Dudusquote, if you're not a Jamaican, you would think that this man was like Jesus Christ or a saint. But guess what? He is responsible for several murders of Jamaicans and even people from other Caribbean territories who was involved in crimes and visited Tivoli Gardens and have never, never seen again. And not even the families get the body, the bodies to bury them. That is how brutal and violent this man is. Jamaicans and all are violent black people. Yes, I am saying it. I am a Jamaican. Jamaicans on a whole are violent black people. Our ancestors were labelled the worst black people by the slave traders. So that's why the worst slaves were brought to Jamaica. And that's how it is. So as the years goes by with these people, you understand? The island has become an haven to breed criminals. It's like a university. You understand? That's how the criminals operate in Jamaica. But what they are not telling you, the Jamaican people and police, is that these police officers who have given everything for the past 40 something years of their lives and know that these people have to be demonstrating for their benefits. You understand? Let's look at that man, the, you know, with the raster. That's a part of the coral gardens rise up against the people. You understand? When coral gardens happened, I wasn't born. But it, it's, it is an event that my late mother and father, my late mother's father, remind me when I was a young child growing up 
in the country of rural Jamaica what you don't know that on Thursday April 30th 1963 Rastafarians killed two police officers Corporal Clifford Melbourne and Inspector Bertie Scott and six civilian two men who have killed the police officers were arrested charged convicted and sentenced and sentenced to hang and were imprisoned others were injured and in prison too. Eventually, the convicted murderers were hung at Spanish Town St. Catherine. But you won't hear the liar Rasta man like Muta Baroka and Cabo and all those people tell you, you know, that the same thing that they're talking about, Bad Friday, that these people, you know, that they had killed two police officers and they have wounded, injured several other police officers. But the Jamaican government, you know, this Jamaican government, they apologize to the killers, the people from Coral Gardens. And look, you know how many bodies that these people are responsible for? 37 police officers. I'm not talking about soldiers. You understand? This man that you're seeing right here, Christopher Dudusko, that's the most powerful man that ever walked in Jamaica. You understand? What the, the media... You know, the Rastas, them, like the Muta Barukas, the Cabo one, the other liars, even members of the Jamaica Labour Party have been doing for years, and some PMP members too have been lying to the Jamaican people. They haven't told the people what happened at Coral Gardens. You understand what these men have done and what started it. But you understand, you know, But remember that the people of Tivoli Gardens and Quarrel Garden St. James, where police officers have lost their lives, murderers got reparation from this government with the support of the PMP LGBTQ party members in parliament, like Peter Phillips, the man who loves criminals, Mark Golins, and Peter Bunting, all of them, they voted to give reparation to these people from both communities who have killed over 37 police officers but yet still in Jamaica, the same police officers who have lost their lives, lot, um, their colleagues, they have watched their colleague died. These are the same police officers now who have to be demonstrating to get their benefits. 16 years. The typical lifespan of a police officer in Jamaica after retirement is two years. It's a very stressful job. It doesn't, it, it's very, very easy for you to see our police officer age in that job. But that's how it is in Jamaica. When you're a police officer, nobody regards you as nothing. You understand? Police officers are not people that the Jamaican people look up to. They look up to criminals. You understand? That's how it is. You know, and... These police officers who are retired from the police force after spending more than 42 years of their life protecting the Jamaican people, like the Jamaican people's lives and property, the JLP LGBTQ plus government led by St. Andrew Oldness, an opposition member of parliament, PMP LGBTQ plus party leader Mark Golin, Deafening silence, disdain is true and steer clear of and evade the police. You don't hear none of them come out and make any statement defending the police officers who have fought for years to maintain, to keep this democracy alive. Because we nearly lose it, you know. We nearly lose our democratic freedom in Jamaica in 1970. In the 70s, most people are not going to tell you, you know. You understand because we are a nation we are people who are liars trained liars if you tell people the truth in jamaica you become their enemy even your family you understand the hard truth hurt them so they will tell you all these things that these people were just like how dudus and judge pang and all those people they are celebrated but yet still these police officers who have fought these gunmen with these terrorists 
They are the ones who got reparation for killing their colleagues, 37 of them and counting, and they have to be demonstrating. I want you to look in. You see that casting? That's a casting of one of our fallen police officers who died at the hands of one man who had a militia in Jamaica. He's now in the United States. Now, whenever he finishes his sentence, you haven't heard anything that they're going to arrest him. But yet still, our police officers, when he returned to Jamaica, you know, don't be surprised that a minister of government will be there to greet him and hug him because he's an era, he's a folk era. You understand? Because he's bucking the system and he determine what is right and who can do it. But yet still the people who are upholding the law, no, they are the problem. So to all my fellow Jamaican young police officers and people, do you see what's happening since independence from the British government? It's all about criminality because the oppressed have become the oppressors and the police force is a reminder to them of the days of slavery. They are all embedded and destroying its members mentally and financially. That's why you're seeing our police officers are demonstrating for their pensions and the criminals from Tivoli Gardens and Coral Gardens who have killed over 37 police officers they receive over three billion dollars from the Jamaican government and counting for reparation because the police force have done wrong to them to defend their lives from these people. Thanks for watching Jamaica Young Police. I could not go to my bed without doing this video because I have noticed that I haven't seen no one um, done anything to highlight the injustice that has been meted out to my colleagues. This is my way of saying thanks to all the people that I have served within the Jamaica Constabulary Force who have nurtured and helped me through my career and made me the man I am. Have a nice day. Like, share, and stay tuned. Bless.